So your friend from uh, high school that you never really liked anyways, that your friends on Facebook posted that his kids got injured with a snowmobile accident on a lake in Vermont. You're the helpful friend. You say, hey, here's some advice. Here's what you can do. Is that the unauthorized practice of law? Maybe. Or suppose you are the lawyer at home, and you're in your PJs, you're telecommuting, and you decide, I want to compete with LegalZoom. I want to form a business where we do low-cost wills. Is that the unauthorized practice of law? These are the issues that we are facing today. Technology knows no borders. Unfortunately, our ethics rules do. And our ethics rules are the big elephant in the room, the issue that none of us really want to talk about. So as you look at the elephant in the room, the big one, the one who's back there, who's over there, who's over there, the, 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 the elephant in the room is the one who's telling you, hey, you can't do this. This isn't what we can do. And technology lawyers, the one who should be taking the lead on this, aren't. We're ceding the ground to ethics experts who supposedly know better. So let's look at history. And Teddy Roosevelt, back about 100 years ago, criticized lawyers for working for big firms. And as a result, the ethics rules were changed. The ethics rules were changed in 1908 uh, to let attorneys be regulated. And the ABA did this. So isn't it ironic now, 100 years later, we have Alanis Morissette, no, 100 years later, <laughs> the very rules that were designed to uh, limit big firms are now being used by those big firms and preventing solo and small firms from competing and using technology effectively. So why is history important? Well, it's important to understand that the rules were based on a physical nexus. They were based on where your chair was planted, even if it was an egg chair that you liked. And that history has maintained ourselves 100 years later. We haven't gotten away from a location-based system. An example is Rule 5.5, which talks about the unauthorized practice of law. And in, in Connecticut, it is holding oneself out to, to be an attorney in the state that you're not licensed to practice in. And the problem with that rule is it's not conforming with the reality that we have today. What is the practice of law anymore? We can easily identify that it is going to court. That's an easy one. But what about responding to your friend on Facebook? What about reviewing a document on your iPad in New York while the client's documents are in Connecticut and, and talking with the client when you're in another state? The big firms right now do have an out. The big firms have figured out that if they have an existing client, they can do some multi-jurisdictional practice. Um, solo and small firms don't have that under Rule 5.5. And regular attorneys, ones like you and me who aren't ethic experts, um, are finding that resistance seems futile. We've become borgified, okay? We, we, we have ceded all the discussion to the experts. None of the general practitioners are involved in this discussion anymore. And indeed, the general practitioners have basically said, uh, you know, this is ethics, it's too difficult to worry about. It's too difficult to, to, to worry about, and let's just have these ethics people figure out the rules for us. And so we keep waiting and waiting. And right now we're all lost. We're lost with, can we do this? Can we do that? Um, and if you remember what happened at the end of loss, weren't we left with a lot of different questions? that weren't answered, and right now we're in that same situation. We keep waiting and waiting, and if we wait long enough, we figure something's gonna happen. And today is the day when we need to start um, not waiting anymore, to start taking action. Now, Ethics 2020 came about. Um, the Commission on Ethics 2020 was formed about a year and a half ago, and they actually came out with an issues paper, as it turns out, a week and a half ago, uh, well after I pitched this idea. And it's on multi-jurisdictional practice. And if you look at the website, you can find information about it. And they're taking a look at what road do we follow? Do we just tweak the rules a little bit, tweak Rule 5.5 to talk about temporary practice? Do we tweak the rules a little bit to permit it in some cases? And I would suggest to you that that Band-Aid um, is just not enough. Instead, we need to think broader. Now, Colorado has a rule that really allows uh, for a much broader uh, practice of law. And I suggest 
Perhaps we call those the South Park rules. Um, but maybe we go one step further. The European Union allows attorneys in one country to practice in another country. Why is it that that works in the European Union and not here? So Ethics 2020 is certainly a start, but it cannot be the, the, the beginning. I'm sorry, it cannot be the end. It has to be the beginning. We need to take action. Geek lawyers as a whole need to make sure that the focus is away from a location-based practice. People like Carolyn who have said, we don't want the regulation of attorneys. Well, I'm telling you, the ethics people, they all have conferences like, like you and me, and they talk about regulation. So regulation isn't going away. We need to talk about how do we refigure those rules to make sure that we can all practice and use the technology. Because ultimately, this isn't about the PJ attorney, the attorney in their PJs that you know you want the tiger PJs that are out there, and you can find them for about $49.99. This is about you and me. And if we don't start taking the action about the ethics rules and start instituting the change that we want to see, we're never going to get there. So ultimately, the elephant in the room doesn't have to be the mean elephant. It can be more benign, like Dumbo, who was a bit shy and reserved at times, but ultimately, he found that his ears could fly, he soared high, and we can all get there and ultimately live happily ever after. Thank you.